Hi, welcome to my new video. This is probably the last video I'll be doing this year, so I wanted to discuss my plans for next year, the projects that I would like to do, my goals, and also the tools that I would like to use for all of these things. And also I would like to show you, because you asked, uh, some of the sketchbooks that I'm excited to try next year. But first let's start with the goals because I want you to understand my thought process when I was deciding what to spend my time for next year. And I started by thinking about these illustrations, so illustrations from 2015, like the first one from Bicycle Boy series and some illustrations from the Cold in Yokohama series. And I find that I actually like them a lot. I come back to them again and again. I came to a conclusion that even though my recent works are a lot more technically difficult, they are more realistic, have more details, have more depth and texture and all kinds of things in them, I don't get this um, storytelling thing so much and fun doing them as much as I do when I'm painting something simpler like this one is here. So, in the end, I decided to get back to my original goal that I had when I came to Japan, so making art with more storytelling in it. So, the storytelling should be the core of the thing that I do. And what I mean by this is, for example, stuff like this. So, these are concept sketches by Hayao Miyazaki for his movies. And even though these are technically simple watercolor illustrations, because they have the characters and because they have this awesome amount of setting and thought put into them, uh, they seem like they are a part of a bigger story, even though we don't know what happens before and after directly from them. They just feel like a part of a bigger story. So that's what I would like to do and I would like to start from these guys. So this is an idea I was developing in 2016, but uh, because I was still working in the animation studio right then, I was not able to properly follow this up. So I would like to start now. Of course, this idea already evolved a lot uh, in my head in such a long time, but I'll use this as a starting point to learn to make art, which is less technically impressive maybe, but more involved story-wise and character-wise. I hope. Okay, let's go for the tools. As the technical aspect is not going to be the main part of the art, I would like to keep things simple, so I would like to use mostly the tools that are in this box, which I keep on my desk almost all the time. I can even close the box and move the tools and just go with them somewhere, but I just use it on my table to keep things in nice order. And everything that I need for the project that I mentioned in the first part is here, maybe except some inks and things that I don't use very often. Okay, so let's start with the fountain pens. This is the main one that I use for line work the most. Lamy Safari with an M nib and I have another one with a different ink inside. The silver one has a thinner nib, so EF nib. The next one is just my regular fountain pen for writing and the black one is an Indigraph pen, so a pen for waterproof India inks. I also have a ball pen, some nice scissors that I got from Kana recently for my birthday I think, a knife for precision cutting, and also this weird knife that I got from somewhere, which is dull, and I use it for cutting off paper from the blocks in which watercolor paper comes most of the times. Also in this box I have the pencils that I use 90% of the time. So here I have my Blackwing pencils and some additional things. Blackwing Pearl, the 602, the Natural Blackwing, the Blackwing Blackwing, so the black one, and the one that I like the most recently, so the Blackwing number 4. It's a limited edition Mars themed, but I like how it feels on paper and how it doesn't smudge so much with watercolors. And also I have some additional pencils like the Big Evolution one, so the plasticky one that I use for sketching a lot, and a red coal erase, and a weird one that I have here. Of course I have my erasers, I mostly use the Tombow Mono one, so the one on the left, and the other ones are just for fun and testing. The next thing is the glass jar I have on my table almost always. This is for storing the pencil shavings that I uh, produce when I sharpen a pencil, and I do this using this knife. So this is a recent addition to my collection. 
and this is a knife crafted in Japan and it's made especially for sharpening pencils with this really uniquely shaped blade. I also use a nice sharpener from time to time when I uh, am dealing for example with color pencils and all the shavings go into this glass jar. For the next project I'll need only few simple brushes, so here I have my Raphael Soft Aqua series brushes and the one on the top is the Travel series one. They are all nice and round and simple and not so expensive, so perfect for my simple paintings that I want to do next year. And for watercolors I'll be using this set which is the Mijello Mission Gold Watercolors, 25 colors of single pigment paints and I have them in a whole bind, really small and compact watercolor box. I put a lot of stickers on it. And I use it with a ceramic palette like this one for mixing the colors and having more mixing space. Okay, so this is basically my everyday working set that I'll be using for the next probably year, making all the art that I told you about. One more thing only, because I got a nice present from Kana on during this Christmas I'm adding some additional watercolor color pencils and because I have no experience using these I'm excited to try them out and to learn what I can do with them. Okay, so now for the sketchbooks. You asked me what sketchbooks I'm excited to use next year and there are two categories that I would like to show you today and here is the first one. These are books made by MD Paper and they contain thin but really high quality paper. The first one is just a blank notebook, so a notebook with no lines in it and it has this smooth creamy paper that's perfect for fountain pens but also if you want to do some sketching with fountain pens or with multiliners for example it's also really really perfect for this it has a lot of pages and it opens flat so it's good for storing ideas and brainstorming and writing text along with the drawings okay so these two are the cotton series so they have more textured cotton paper in them and i have the s and the m size so the small and the medium and there is also one that's a bit larger than and than this and you may already know the sketchbook because i have been using it for some time and testing it and even using it during some pencil sketching sessions here live on youtube you can find them if you look on my account and because of the nice paper texture, these are perfect for pencil sketching and color pencil drawings, but also you can use them in a pinch with uh, fountain pens and with watercolors, even if you keep the watercolors not so watery. The paper is white, the paper quality is great, they also open flat, so they will be a great help for making sketches and concept sketches for my simple illustrations. And the second category of sketchbooks that I would like to show you here are these. So these are sketchbooks with more heavyweight paper meant for watercoloring and mixed media work. So here I have the Canson 180 sketchbook. So this is a sketchbook with nice hard covers, but it still opens flat and it has really well balanced paper for mixed media work. You can use watercolors and pens and fountain pens and anything really. It's really fun to use. Okay, here I have the second one, which is the Mossery watercolor cotton paper sketchbook. This is the one that I have been testing in some videos recently, so if you haven't seen those, just go and check them out. This has really heavyweight watercolor paper and I'm excited to just use it more for my sketches. And lastly, I have the Moleskine Art Plus series sketchbook, which I honestly don't think is the best product for its price, but I still have a lot of blank pages in it and the paper is good enough for simple illustrations so I'm excited about completing it next year. Okay that's it for this video, I hope you liked it and felt inspired for your next year projects. I also wanted to thank you a lot for supporting me and allowing me to focus on my own projects like the ones that I mentioned in this video. Okay that's it, as always feel free to comment, share and subscribe and you can support me also on Patreon. See you in the next video, bye!